Okay. Well, perhaps you two should go ahead since I'm actually in character, not going to be there for a bit. Okay. So, Z, you're still um, unresponsive. That would be correct. So. First thing I'm going to do is take off my helmet. And start just talking at you. Um, what have we done? What? That. That scale of death. They didn't have a chance to uh, redeem themselves. They didn't have a chance to repent. Um, I'm also going to try casting Cure, even though I realize that uh, it's not going to heal you because you're not injured, but... Um, do I expend the mana to do so, Arch? Okay. Any response? Nope. I'm debating on doing something damaging. But I think that would probably be a bad idea. What? Guido, were you present when, right before the flame, uh, the fire ley line broke? Were you were you there with, uh, or right after the fire ley line broke, were you there with uh, Colson, Fear, yes. Seal, and Z? Yes. Z's body, and I'm going to phrase this specifically, has the exact same response level that it did during that particular time. However, the little flame that came out and was teasing Colson isn't there. But you get a you get the feeling that the two of those things are very similar. Is there a candle in the room? Or a, okay. I'm going to light the candle. No response. <laughs> okay. So, taking off my gauntlets as well. And I'm going to take Z's hand in mine and basically do the for lack of a better way of describing it grandfatherly pet you know to take the hand and you know Rub, yeah, yeah. Have, holding it in one hand like this yeah. and then with the other hand yeah gotcha yeah. and i'm i'm just talking you know basically continuing the train of thought of what have we done Okay. Her hand in yours feels cool and crisp. Um, in fact, the holding her hand, you are reminded oddly enough uh, of the contrast of the first time you held a girl's hand and how wet and clammy and moist and sticky kind of it was and, and how different this is in comparison that there is just, her hand is smooth and soft and cool and there's no hint whatsoever of any kind of nervous moisture or clammy hands or anything like that. Uh, in fact, her hand uh, feels, you know, unlike, you know, feeling clammy and kind of cool to the touch, like, you know, would belie someone who is feeling nervous or guilty or otherwise, you know, would be wringing their hands. Uh, her hand is just dry and 
uh, an even temperature that you would expect for, you know, the temperature it is in the room. Um, there's no resistance in her hand whenever you grab her hand. Her body shows no uh, acknowledgement like stiffening of the muscles trying to keep her hand from you. Uh, but neither does she grasp your hand or make it easier for you to hold her like she's reaching out for you. Continuing my monologue, but using the um, mental connection. Uh, you said it was uh, crystal clear or static? I don't remember. It is. Have you ever watched the Snowy Channel back before oh, yeah. cable? You connect to me, and and not not like you're watching a channel that's getting poor reception. You're watching a channel that doesn't exist, kind of Snowy Channel. Or you're watching, you know, a channel after the programming has ended, so that literally all there is is static. You don't get any hint of underlying. Uh, right. of any kind of thought process going on. All you're getting is just a buzz of white noise. Oh, wait. But one thing you do notice, when you reestablish the mental link, you catch the brightest, not the brightest, the, the slightest, there we go. That's the EST word I was looking for. The slightest, you get a muscular response. I'm going to phrase it like that in her hand. Not like it was conscious. Like a muscle twitch? Yes. And you don't know if that was intended or not. Or even if it was reactionary or not. But you do notice it. Well, it was more of a reaction than I had uh, gotten previously. So, continuing with the mental link... Basically, come back, Z. We need to talk. Nada. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else I can do. I could try cure disease. Nada. So, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss as far as uh, what to do next. Okay. Uh, well, you have a couple of options. You can keep pushing in the same line that you've been going in, or you can stop and kind of sit and reflect quietly. Uh, either one of those will have the same effect, so I'm going to let you pick which one you're doing. Suddenly, and without warning, the iron will of the Lich King descends upon you. Lemon lime Drink week. the Canada Dry. Uh, so, yeah, ba basically Guido, what I'm saying here is uh, no matter which action path you choose, it's going to have the same result in about 15 minutes. So you may choose whichever or a combination of both for character development or purposes. Well, I'm basically continuing with the um, speaking both verbally and mentally um, with the hand petting thing. Okay. Um, so about 15 minutes goes by. And the next thing happens. I'm sorry, As the next one? The next thing happens. I'm, I'm oh, getting okay. ready to describe it. I'm trying to figure out how. Right, I was coughing. As you are holding her hand, whereas before it felt cool and crisp, um, it now is starting to, and you don't notice it at first, but the hand that you're holding, and the other one is just kind of lying flat in her lap, the hand that you're holding starts to heat up. Okay. It's a very dry heat. You're not, she's not sweating. It's not because you're holding, you know, you, you don't get the feeling it's because you're holding on to her hand. But as you're sitting there holding it, you start to feel, have you ever held your hand under water that was not so hot as to immediately scald you, but the more you held your hand under it and kind of stayed there, the more it started to just get uncomfortably hot. Uh, yeah, it's basically warming. Very up my similar. 
yeah, very similar to that, only it's a very dry heat. And you, you distinctly feel it in all of the places that you are touching her skin on that hand. Um, I will maintain contact until it is painful. Okay. So Are if it's doing it, anything else, same thing, just the, the, the mental and verbal. Okay. Uh, about another, we'll say five to six minutes goes by and you are, you have your gauntlets off. Uh, you yeah. are no longer capable of holding her hand. It, it is hot enough that you, when you pull your, you jerk your hand away from it, you look, you actually have red fingerprint lines on your hand where her fingers were lying and touching you. Uh, probably to the level of first degree burn. So nothing severe. And she still has shown no visible mental or nonverbal, you know, response. By the way, the level of heat that my hand was giving off, um, you could feel that. I'm assuming you're kind of holding my hand over top of your lap. Sure. You could feel the heat emanating off of my hand onto your leg. Up, you know, where my hand was above you. Through the armor? Unlikely. And not, like, really noticeably, but you could definitely tell that heat was, the heat was large enough that it was radiating into you. When you Ooh, dropped sure. my hand, any noticeability of heat whatsoever is completely gone instantaneously. I mean, the heat that is emanating from the hand is gone? The heat that or... is emanating from the hand. The burns so... on yourself are still very noticeable, and you do take damage and heal them. Right. So it was my contact with you that was causing the heat? Possibly. I will test this theory. Okay. What? How are you testing the theory? I will pick up your hand again. All right. You pick up my hand and I snatch it away. I still don't respond in any other way, but I do snatch my hand back immediately. I'll reach up to your shoulder and basically just comfortingly um, hold your shoulder. Right or left shoulder? Uh, so left hand to your right shoulder. My left hand reaches up and grabs your wrist and pulls it away from me and immediately lets go. And you have the very distinct mental impression of don't touch me. Okay, well, at least I'm getting a response. Are you going to have any kind of mental communications? Um, yeah, I, I haven't broken the mental communication. Well, yeah, I know. But I mean, are you going to, are you just processing or are you going to actively dip back into your previous mental monologue or are you going to go some other vein? Um, starting with the original monologue, um, trying to find out, you know, asking if, if you're all right, um, anything I can do to help you, you know, snap you out of it or whatever. To which you get a very, I'm going to call it Kurt. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to, how to phrase, you get the distinct impression that if she was speaking, she would have just snipped like two or three words at you. Uh, which is basically along the lines of, there is nothing wrong with me. But you're not here. At this point, she will turn and look you in the eye. 
whereas before she's kind of been just staring at her hands mm-hmm. and over her lap, she will actually look up and look you in the eye. And despite the fact that there is no facial expression whatsoever on her face, you actually get the impression of, I'm going to call it a very sharp flame. Um, Rather than like a roaring, raging, you know, like wildfire or something that I would consider very angry, this is very focused, precisioned, uh, like a welder's flame. I was just very not, deliberate, yeah. uh, almost cold. And she says, "I am here," and she says it out loud. What did we do? And Z is going to raise her hands, much like I'm actually doing here, and fold them. And she's going to take a deep breath. And with the same cold, deliberate flame look in her eyes, she is going to remake eye contact with you. And she is going to say, your lack of sensibility murdered 34 people and allowed two people to escape. Are you happy now? Uh, Two people to escape? Yes. There were two Moorsmen who rather deliberately, rather than attack your foolish self, ran away. Whether to alert the authorities or to flee with their findings, I am uncertain. If only they didn't hate the desolates. Being hated is a part of who you are. I hope sincerely that this has taught you a lesson and that you will come to understand this. You can tell that uh, Guido is processing. Okay. It, it, it looks like he wants to say something, but he's holding his tongue. Z is going to... Whereas this entire time you felt in the mental communications that you felt that she is putting up a... She hasn't broken mental communication with you thus far, but you have felt a very clear and distinct wall. And I'm going to phrase it that way. Built up between you. Uh, like she is only... She's very deliberately choosing what it is she thinks about. And all of a sudden you get a feeling that there is a very small door opened in this wall. A door that wasn't there before. And Z shares with you a memory. She shares with you an image of herself as a very young girl. You're not certain how old, but clearly she has not reached puberty in this picture. And in this memory, you see her carrying something. You know not what it is at first. And running from a town that you don't recognize. While a horde of children and adults are following her, throwing stones upon her, brandishing weapons at her. And you don't get any emotion from this picture. Almost as if she isn't letting herself feel those emotions again. All you're getting is the imagery. Not even the sounds or the smells or anything like that. And you run and run and run and run. And you see her run for hours. At 
one point there is someone on horseback chasing her down. And she barely manages to escape by diving, still carrying whatever it is that she's carrying, into a giant field of some kind of thorny bush. and crawling through this, still carrying whatever it is that she's carrying. And you can tell she's very, very, very much doing everything that she can to protect this bundle that she's carrying. And she crawls until night falls, still inside this briar patch. And when night falls, you hear the first sound. Because all this time this has been only sight. When night falls, you hear sound, and you hear the sound of an infant Meridos? crying. Guys, in and you see one giant tear roll down Z's face. Not in her dream self, in real life. And the memory abruptly cuts off, and she says... I had a family once. But I have never had friends and I have never felt love. Save for one person. And I know not the fate of that person because this world denied it of me. Learn what you are and learn how to live and survive. And she stands up and she goes over and she gets in her pack and she pulls out her porcelain teapot that Coulson enchanted for her to auto-create and heat water. And she puts in a tea mixture that is a bit of chamomile, some mint, and some ginger. No sugar. And she brews it kind of strongly on the ginger side. And when she's done, she pours two glasses. And she walks over and she hands you one. And then she sits down and drinks. I take the tea very gently. Was that your sister? That was my sister. And the elements willing, she is still alive and happy today. When was the last time you saw her? Three days after that. Would you reunite with her if you could? To show my face to her again and to claim our family tie would do her naught but ill and would likely break my heart. That's what I thought. Something needs to be done to alleviate the hatred. Guido. I have lived with this condition. Really quick, really quick okay. before you continue. Okay. At that point, I break the mental link. Okay. Um, uh, Z has actually been speaking out loud to you this entire time. She's just been mirroring it 100% uh, in her thoughts. Right, right. And, and same with Guido. But okay. at this point, he breaks the mental link. Okay. Um, she's going to say, Guido... I have lived in this state for my entire existence. In my early days, I could not find thought nor reason for why I was hated. No one knew. No one cared. They saw me and they found some reason, created one fictionally where it might have been, 
for me to be wrong. Do you know why you were attacked today? They don't need a reason. Yes, that's right. They don't need a reason. When they see you, every instinct in their body tells you that you tells them that you are wrong. And their minds, their subconscious minds will devise a reason for the wrongness of your existence. And no matter how fearful they are of you, no matter how much they loved you three seconds ago, and no matter how much good you do for them, the moment they discover, or someone near them discovers, or someone near you hates you, for whatever reason, no matter how much they liked you, it could be your wife, Guido. It could be your child. It could be your mother, your best friend. It could be Snarg, and it has been Snarg. Yes. There is no rhyme nor reason, and there is no fix. There is only to hide or to run away. I do it a little bit cleverer than most. With a lot of help. But what if there was another way? If there is some... I don't know my, what it is. My entire adulthood searching for it has not found one. Well, now you're not searching alone. And she does kind of laugh at that silently. Um, almost, there's a lot of pain in her laughter there. I bet. And it's not in a, a jaded or cynical or pessimistic way. No, it's not a scoff. And, and, and she'll say after she, she kind of laughs. And it's not jaded, cynical, or pessimistic. Uh, in fact, you get the distinct feeling that it is her acceptance of reality. Not, re you know, not being a realist. But this is her acceptance of reality speaking. And she says, All the prayers and wishes in the world do not always mean there's an answer. And effort and talent can come to naught, but... Doesn't mean you stop looking. I appreciate having an extra set of eyes and a pair of helping hands. Now, I am assuming by about this point, probably an hour to an hour and a half-ish has gone by. Um, Snark, so. I'm not certain what your timetable was. Uh, it was two hours, actually. Okay. Um, Guido, uh, I think Z's pretty much come to a conclusion on her part of the conversation. Was there anything else you were going to say or mention or ask? Well, first thing I'm going to ask is what are we going to do about the, uh, the fireball? What is there to be done? Well. I didn't uh, hurt anything there. There will be no real repercussions. I can only hope neither of us were seen. And you know she is referring to uh, you having been spotted by a fairy or uh, me uh, or either of us having been spotted teleporting out. Well, do we need to make any plans in case we were spotted or um, to which Z responds with, uh, by the way, 
correct me if I'm wrong, brother, but this entire time I've been in uh, young adolescent male mode. Is that correct? I'm going to assume so, okay? I know it's been over 24 hours since I did a shift. Um, so Z's response to that is she's going to... Um, I forget how I activate my... Because I know they're both tattoos. Uh, but I forget how my, I activate my other tattoo. But uh, I'm basically going to turn it off and go back into adult form. Kind of right before your eyes. Uh, which means I'm now in rather snug fitting and revealing clothing, which I'm just going to start stripping out of in front of you and changing clothes. I'll politely turn away and drink my tea. Okay. Um. And that's Z's only response to what should we do if we were spotted? Okay. What about fallout from the fireball, though? The two that left, left before I cast fire. So um, there's going to be a lot of scare going around. Uh, those tabloids you were reading earlier, I'm sure will come up with some great stories. True. I wonder how long it'll take them to publish that. It'll be out tomorrow. I'm pretty sure brother just said, yep. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> I definitely want to read those. And Z's just going to, after, after a little while, you know, of not talking, you're just going to kind of see Z just kind of close her eyes and bow her head and just shake her head. Something bothering you? Why did you make yourself visible? The scaffolding fell on me. Okay. Why did you knock that guy's rib cage out? Because he hit me with the wrench and insulted my mother. Among other things. Guido, I'm going to offer you a piece of advice. Do you want to know what a desolate's best friend is? Humility. You are going to be faced with meaningless hatred meaningless violence by people who are far inferior to you in almost every aspect of your being. You will have to learn to take a slap to the face and to turn the other cheek and to walk away. Because if you taunt them vocally or physically, you will either have innocent blood on your hands because they can't help the way that they feel. I told you, it's instinctual. So therefore, killing them means they were innocent. They are just as innocent in this matter as you are and have just as little choice in the matter. The difference is, is they don't have a choice. All they can do is hate you. All they can do is lash out at you. It is you who chooses to escalate the matter. It is you who chooses to move from verbal taunts to violence. It is you who chooses to return the stone thrown at you tenfold. He gave your helmet a little ringing. 
you ended his life and took away the father of his children and the husband of his wife. And you made that choice. And once you make that step, once you take that step, they can only do one thing. They can only swarm at you like a bunch of angry mosquitoes, which you can bat away and smush without batting an eyelash. But they will continue to swarm at you until they are all gone or you are dead. Learn to be humble. These should have been a part of your teachings as a paladin. Now you must take it many, many steps further. You are not me, Guido. You have not lived the life I have. And you cannot kill with strength and the knowledge that you had no other choice. You will feel grief and it will tear you apart. I envy you. I was never given the choice of feeling grief over the matter. And I hope that you can do better than I have. But for how long? Well, there exists someone in this world who knows how to fix things for you, at least temporarily. I don't know who they were or why they did. <laughs> but they did for me. Perhaps we can find them and they can do for you what they've done for me. Perhaps they will say no. There exists a city or so it's rumored, somewhere deep in the dyers. A city that is built by, run by, desolates. I don't know where it is, nor how to get there, nor have I ever tried. But, for the sake of your sanity and my humanity, if we cannot find some way to help you exist in the world in which you come from, the least I can do is try to get you to one where you will be accepted. It's not Collier, is it? No. Collier is the capital of the Drudge, correct? City, um, drudges are notoriously known, and you would know this, for being accepting across the board, even of desolates. The other culture that we know of that does that, the other two cultures that we know of that does that, would be Olthoi and Mites. Um, however, you would find it very hard to live in Hive, and I'm not certain they would accept you. And as far as I can remember, there is no homeland of the mites. They're just kind of everywhere. Yeah, I'm correct. Uh, so your choices, if you want to coexist within, you know, this world without having that would probably be to attempt to live inside Hive if they would let you. Unlikely. Uh, yeah, very <laughs> unlikely. Or to Enough. attempt to live inside Collier, which if you recall... Uh, the mayor and the, the, the mayor's wife, ex-mayor's wife, and the desolate daughter, whose names I can't remember, I actually sent them to Collier and hooked them up with some contacts of mine to get settled in. Right. Yeah, so that's also a viable option. Uh, however, during the current political turmoil, uh, Z, if you brought up that idea, would actually really strongly caution you against that because she is deathly afraid of a major conflict occurring and someone attempting to either pull Collier into that politicalness uh, or overthrowing the drudges. And 
once they got in there and overthrew the dredges or took over in a military state, um, well, let's just say any desolates that happened to be found would probably be executed on site. Yeah. But you can't send a woman alone with an infant through the dyers. Checking again for a time frame of passage. Have we reached the two hour mark? Uh, Q snap, we have reached the two hour mark. Snarg, feel free to come back in whenever you're ready. All right. Well, you uh, you hear him coming before you see him. Obviously. Krum, and he's walking very slowly. We kind of have uh, the door barricaded. Yes. He stops at the door. You're... Who is it? It's me. Mind link. Oh, hi. Welcome back. Shove, 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 shove. I'm, I'll and move as the I'm arm shoving, more. you kind of, as, as, as I'm attempting to shove, you kind of hear, you know, Z's noise, you know, Z's voice over the, the scraping. Snark's back. <laughs> it smells very arm. strongly of ash. Uh, actually, Guido and Z both also smell very strongly of ash. In yeah. fact, they probably have ash flecks on their person. Well, I've been in it for two hours, so... Yeah, in their hair. Yes. I've actively changed clothes and I'm a much more adult and feminine. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he, he pushes the door open. And he looks pretty... I'm decent, brother. Stop whacking me with a <laughs> pillow. No. Okay, so what's Snark? But he looks very. I think the word he uses disappointed. I'm just gonna look back and forth between both of you. You alright? We made it out alive. Alright. He stramps over to, he walks over to the bench and starts uh, taking off some of his gear. He's leaving again in a minute. There's two mosswarts I'm going to track down. Mosswarts? Moorsmen? Or Moorsmen, sorry. Maybe I got that wrong. <laughs> mosswart? What's a mosswart? The other M. I've never heard of those. Uh, and Z so kind of perks up at this, and she kind of mind links with you, and she gives you the briefest mental image of, you know, just kind of out of the corner of her eye. You don't have a very clear picture of two Moorsmen, kind of as they're walking around a corner, while Guido, and in the picture you see Guido um, with a mob of uh, 33 people. He just goes, he stops it. I'm like, I know what happened. And Z just kind of looks at him and goes, no, I'm pointing to the two in the back. Did you see them? I know where they went, yes. Good. I don't know how much they saw. And I want to know why they were there. They were not part of the workers. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm cleaning up and I'm going after them. I'm going to stop by the officer's place first. Uh, Z is actively brushing her hair out and braiding it. Uh, one long braid, which after she gets it done, you notice she's twining a, a black ribbon in it. Once she's done, she takes it and she, dwarven style, like wraps it around her head and ties it into a nice big bow, like right here. Not a big bow, but you know, she ties it into a bow there so that the braid is actually kind of wrapped around her head. Okay. Well, you do and, that, then you realize he's not really paying attention to anyone at all. Oh, he's no, no, I'm, entirely I'm just noise. saying this so that, you know, the, the viewers kind of get an idea of what's going on. So you're okay. you're changing, and Z is fully getting dressed. She may not have mentioned this to you, but uh, the viewers can definitely tell, and so can Guido. Z is going with Snark. Right. So, that she's not really going to say anything else. Okay. Well... He makes his changes. He basically washed himself off so he doesn't just stink of ash right now. And 
and he comes back and puts his stuff back on. He's like, probably back later tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a little while, Guido. Seriously, don't leave. You're coming? Did you think I was going to let you go by yourself? Don't worry, I don't plan on murdering anyone else today unless it's necessary. Glad you're so nonchalant about it. And he leaves. And I follow. <laughs>